If there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Yeah. General Ranasinga. Different centers. That's a very good comment. Uh, our subsequent analysis are going to follow up. This was group level analysis, aggregate analysis of, on averages. Our subsequent analysis will be a longitudinal analysis where we take each beneficiary and follow him personally over time. So in this case, we would be able to see those who were transferred from Omante to Busa, how they changed uh, as a consequence of the transfer. Thank you for this comment. Sir. Uh, my question is um, th that uh, the Sri Lanka model, uh, in terms of relative success, three-year period, and your own um, work has been far less in terms of time, uh, how does it compare in your experience with uh, some other model? You, you mentioned that uh, uh, the Islamic model, for example, you did not, or the jihadi model, uh, you did not have any conclusive uh, results, if I got that uh, right. So, is, are you in a position uh, to indicate uh, the success of the Sri Lanka model so far? Uh, and what are the chances vis-a-vis -vis the re-radicalization of these groups, again, in comparison with something else that you've done? In, in other words, is there a psyche in this part of the world which is different, uh, both in terms of culture, religion, uh, and motivation? These are very good questions. <clears throat> uh, I have answers on two levels. First of all, there is no scientific data, no primary data about any other radicalization program. The countries involved did not want to take the risk, apparently, to allow themselves to be scientifically assessed. So there is no data other than impressions, and the impressions of the organizers of the programs are, yes, it works, and thousands of detainees were released in Saudi Arabia and other places. But there is, and the critics say, no, they do not work but it's just a, a debate without any objective evidence. So there is no objective evidence, no point of comparison. As to the uniqueness of the Sri Lankan situation, I think there are aspects that are unique and aspects that are universal. I think that the psyche of, of, of all men is universal. The, the Sri Lankan circumstances are uh, significantly unique in a number of ways. One way is that, that the LTTE was defeated decisively on the ground. And I think that eradicates the hope that one's significance can be elevated through fighting, through participating in armed combat. Because they seem to have been demolished. There is very little chance. And because of that, this opens the mind to alternative possibilities, which happened in the radicalization. I recently visited Cairo and I talked to a major journalist who was a, supervising the deradicalization of very important Egyptian group, Al-Jihad, responsible for the assassination of Sadat, a variety of, of, a, of a atrocities against tourists and so forth. They deradicalized. But when he described the circumstances of their radicalization, it became clear they, they radicalized, they saw the light, the theological light. They published pamphlets uh, that talked about the, the, the um, falseness of the jihadist beliefs only after they were demolished on the ground. All, only after they were all arrested, their weapons caches were confiscated, they saw no hope. 
And at that point, their mind opened to alternative theological arguments. Before that, the same arguments had no penetration. So I think the Sri Lankan circumstance is significantly affected, in my opinion, by the fact that the army did what they did, that they, they demolished them on the ground, and it's clear that, that this doesn't work, that t terrorism and insurgency in this particular context doesn't work. It's also possible that there is something about the culture, about the Buddhist culture, about the philosophy that is unique, and, and for that we need to compare it with other situations uh, where the philosophy, the religion is different. But we know that very similar dynamics uh, characterize the, the radicalization of the Basque terrorists, uh, of the Irish terrorists, of the uh, provisional IRA. So th there are universal psychological processes that are common. At the same time, there are unique aspects of, uh, of the Sri Lankan context that need to be taken into account. I'd like to uh, make uh, two comments on the issue. Uh, first pertains to the word of uh, jihad being an Islamic uh, struggle or something. I don't agree with that. Jihad comes from the word jihad, which is struggle. So any struggle could be termed as jihad in Arabic. Arabic. So therefore, uh, all jihads, uh, if they are so called, are not necessarily religious. And my second comment pertains to clubbing Iraq in the, uh, in the de-radicalization uh, of religious uh, issues. In my opinion, Iraq had nothing to do with religion. It was its occupation by foreign forces that uh, sort of, uh, you know, forced the people to rise. And you uh, would know better than us being a scientist in the subject that Iraq has never been a religious country. It's the most secular Arab state uh, in, the, in the region. Uh, so therefore, uh, not necessarily religious angles are or were active in Iraq. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, I accept uh, uh, your comment about jihad. Uh, it's the misinterpretation of jihad by the extremists that, that caused all the trouble. Jihad in Islam is a very peaceful concept. It's internal struggle, and it has to be, uh, that interpretation has to be promoted. As to Iraq, uh, I think General Stone is best uh, able to address that comment. I know that, uh, that uh, in part, uh, Al-Qaeda was active in Iraq, and their propaganda was active in Iraq, and at least the suicide bombing, you, you, despite of what Robert Pape has argued, the political scientist, I think you commit suicide for something more important than for an occupation. You need to have a, a justification for, for taking your own life. And I think religion, misinterpreted however it may be, provides such a justification. Thank you again very much. <laughs>